How's everybody? Awesome, awesome. So uh, Tom, Tom did let me know that he's got a super, super important appointment at Dark Horse today. So um, I'm going to be taking over. Uh, he asked me to come on and speak to everybody about um, prospecting, ex uh, ex expireds and FISBOs mainly. So I'm going to run with that. You guys are welcome to jump in, ask any questions that you might have. Um, can somebody tell me, does uh, Tom start off with, with wins or um, uh, lender reports maybe, Pitt? Is there anything that you guys normally do before I take over? No, no, no just hop right in. Just hop good right to go. In into it. Yeah. Okay, very, very cool. Well, I see some people that I know on here. It's awesome. Um, I've I'm going to just give you really, really brief because I've been on here before and shared and I don't want uh, somebody to have to sit through my story ag again. But uh, just briefly, the reason you probably asked me to do uh, expires and FISBOs is that's kind of how I built my business in the beginning. Um, I started uh, 2010, 2011, something like that, many, 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 many years ago, a long time ago. Um, and uh, expires was about the only thing I known. Uh, our brokerage at the time told us uh, to go do floor time and some things that just weren't working for us. So um, I started with that stuff. Uh, I, I will tell you, uh, if anybody's going to have to go in there now that the market has kind of shifted a little bit and we're, we're finding that it's taken a, a lot more effort to get the same amount of business um, and you're newer to it, I will tell you, you don't have to be great at it to, to begin. In fact, I, I, I train people all the time on, on prospecting and lead generation. And I've yet to see somebody as bad as I used to be when I first started. So th there is totally hope. I was uh, absolutely horrid at making calls. Sticking with it long enough, what I am is stubborn. And I did it long enough to be able to get better at it. And I'm going to share some of the things that made me better with it. So that hopefully it'll help some of you guys. Um, so I started off with uh, expireds first. Um, the way that I found them, just is anybody not calling expireds or FISBOs on here? A few. Okay, good. So then uh, I'll run. Oh, awesome. Oh, wow. Well, so first of all, um, I'm going to share. This is the easiest, by the way. This is the easiest way to get listings. Uh, for encouragement, um, Brent Gove needed a team for a new brand new agent, just got licensed. He put them on our team uh, probably seven to 10 days ago. Uh, he made 98 dials. He's had seven conversations, about two hours of talk time. He set four appointments and he has his first listing. So it, it's low hanging fruit. It's very, very easy to do. So I'm excited to see that some of you haven't tried it yet. So hopefully you'll go out and make some dials today. Um, the, where to get them from? Um, I would. I had no money when I started. So I didn't have Red X and some of the tools that I have now. Um, so I would go to the MLS just about midnight 12 1205 something like that you'll get a the the fresh expireds for the night i know a lot of people don't want to stay up till midnight um i i really wanted to be good at real estate so i would i would stay up until midnight i would wait for that list with excitement and then um i didn't have like i said red x and stuff so i would google search the i'd go to the apn get the property owner's name and i would search on the internet random search wherever i could get phone numbers i'd get a list of 10 to 15 phone numbers most of them were bad and i would call through those starting at 7 30 in the morning every morning and i would just call through over and over again until i got them so the the list now i mean it's so much easier to get in fact you guys probably have uh, i know some of you have that stuff given to you within probably atomic habits or the group tom's pretty good about sharing resources so you guys can probably get those very easily. Um, so with, uh, I'll, I'll get into kind of what I say and stuff, because I know uh, if you're brand new, that's your focus. You think it's very important to know exactly what to say and get it all perfect. Um, it It's not really that. I'll, I'll help you with that part too. Uh, but from the list, sit down, make the calls. The important part of it is for me, the success is built in showing up every single day and doing it over and over again. I had nothing else to do. There was no other real estate business going on. Um, so I, I had time. I just didn't have money. So with uh, prospecting time, uh, when I would set up in the morning at 730, this is the most important part. And I know it's true because I, I had slumps along my career and I would record some of my calls. And I know when I didn't do this one thing, my calls went terrible. In fact, I went I was already making like three hundred thousand dollars a year and I went like two months without getting any business at all. And it was all me. I started recording my calls in the mornings and I found that um, I because I was doing so poorly and I was in this rut, 
that my conversations with the, the client on the other end of the phone were absolutely terrible. There was so much desperation coming out of me because I had that pressure with the family to pay the bills to try to close the deal that I was this, I, I come across as a sleazy salesperson and that's not who I am at heart, you know? So when I seen that on video, uh, after being a little bit disgusted with myself, I, I could see the problem. I could say like, that's not you. That's not how you're supposed to act. And then I can study the tape and say, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to help the next person on the phone. I don't care if I get a transaction. I just want to get back to the way I used to be. And it wasn't but a day or so that I was already setting appointments again. So this is, this is important, even though it may not seem it, is to, to be in the right state. Uh, and a little tip that I have for you to get in the right state is to call somebody you love. Um, call without a purpose, you know, a friend. Um, I, a lot of times I would call my mom because my mom knows how good I am at everything and she loves me and she thinks I'm the best. So I would call mom, you know, like mom's a real good one or one of my best friends and just have a, a good conversation. That little thing, having a good conversation, not about real estate, really puts you in a good place where you can actually call and, and be of service to the person on the other, other end of the phone. I'm going to teach you some things to, to do that today as well, but it is so important. Uh, the next thing uh, is to like, for me, I was poor. And when I wore a suit jacket, I felt not poor. I know that's kind of stupid, but I would put on uh, the suit jacket and then I felt like, you know, okay, now I'm the man. You know, uh, it, I just felt better about myself entirely. And I, that might be silly, but you'll, you'll see a lot of people do that. Like Bo Jackson would be a whole nother character when, when he would go on to the field to play. Or David Goggins, you know, is Goggins when he needs to be aggressive. Like there, there's something to, to being that alter ego of yourself. Um, so if there's something that makes you feel better, some people is just setting up straight. It's in the posture, you know, whatever that is, you have to identify it so that you can come from a good space and and really be present with the person on the other end of the phone. The, the consistency is controlled by the calendar. Prospecting is a part of your job going forward, especially right now. Like you, you, you can't just have things falling into your lap like there were before. If you came on in the last two or three years, um, I, I'm not going to say it was easy because I know it's always hard when you're starting out, but the opportunity was much bigger back then. Everybody had, I mean, interest rates were so low, like, like it, it was a financial mistake not to buy a home if you had the ability. So it's not bad or good. It's just different right now. And with the, the consistent action over and over again, you're going to get results. Like, like showing you with, with uh, Kyle there, brand new, not, not the most skilled person, but consistently showing up. We know if you do about 100 dials and with expires, like it was way less for me. And I'm hoping it'll be way less for you. Like internet leads are the worst. And if you dial 100 of them, you're going to get an appointment. You know, if you have the conversations, that's a little bit of follow-up. So I'm, I'm going to ask that uh, if you're not using your calendar and booking in your time for prospecting, it's something you really should be doing going forward if, if you're serious about this business. I know that uh, for those of you that's not using it, it sounds stupid, but it's very important. I, I actually fought my coach for three and a half years before I actually started sticking to that calendar. When I did, I, I was able to identify you know, uh, the time wasting stuff that I was doing and really be able to move the needle forward. So with your calendar, I'm, I'm not all about business. I have like so many kids and so many things to do. Uh, like the first thing I'm going to put in there is the stuff that's important to me. That's, you know, uh, church on Sunday morning, scripture study in the morning, uh, date nights with the wife. Uh, every single day I do an hour of no phone uninterrupted play with my youngest son who's eight doing whatever he wants to do, even if it's video games, you know, like there's, those are the most important things. If for nothing else, start using a calendar so that you make sure that your family and the things that are important to you are, are getting your attention first, then put in your business around it, put it, put in your vacations, you or like the vacations you want to take a year, all that stuff first, then put in your business. That way there's no excuse for not being able to prospect because if you don't prospect right now, I really believe you don't put in that two two hours a day prospecting. I, I honestly believe you're going to put in eight hours a day for somebody else eventually. Like it's it's one or the other. I would much rather see you build a business for yourself that that provides a great lifestyle for you with less time. 
it's scary to, to be managing yourself for some people starting out, but it gets so much easier if you'll just do it long enough to give yourself a chance to succeed. Excuse me. Okay, um, scripts. I've never been a fan of scripts. I know uh, it sounds robotic when you do a script at first. It sounds awkward and it's terrible. The way I use scripts is to get uh, a direction. Like I, I got to get some information from the client if I'm really going to be able to figure out what their problem is and how to solve it. So using the scripts, and there's so many available. I have a bunch, Tom, I'm sure has a, a ton help you get familiar with uh, with carrying a conversation a certain way and then coming back. If you want scripts, let me know, I'll get them to you. What I use now for our team is an acronym that I, I learned recently that helps get everything lined up for you. And like they just keep it right next to their laptop when they're dialing and it's LP Mama. And it, it covers everything uh, that, that you want to get out of a conversation and lead you with an appointment at the end. Even if that appointment's for follow-up, a, a lot of people aren't ready to go right away. They're waiting for something. And if that's truly the case, we'll, we'll talk about how to find out. Um, then this, this is a little guideline that'll help you remember to bring the conversation back to what you're trying to do. And it makes your conversations faster too. LP Mama stands for Location, Price, Motivation, Agent, Mortgage, and Appointment. I'll go through each one of those with you. It's something I've always done um, through through the the scripts. But when you get into an expired or a FISBO, the client, and they should, is going to take the conversation all over the place. And then our job is to build rapport with them, stay in agreement and in alignment, and then bring them back to those questions over and over again so that we get them all out. Get them in your CRM for follow-up and everything else. Keep your notes right in front of you. So with location... When we get somebody that for an expired or FISBO, we have the location. For internet leads, we need to know where they, they need to be. Um, with expireds, you already have the location, you know the property, you just want to confirm it. So if I'm calling an expired, you know, hey, I've seen that you had 123 Main Street for sale or whatever, um, you have that part of it. Internet leads, we want to ask them, hey, it looks like you were inquiring um, on properties in the Green Haven area. You know, are you open to other areas as well? Don't ask them, like lock them into a place. Ask them if they're open to something else too. Because a lot of times somebody wants, you know, I, I want an acre of land, a shop, a house, and I want it under $300,000. Like, we can't do that here. You know, I, in fact, I don't know if we can do that anywhere anymore. But we need that location out. Um, the next one is the price. And not asking them, how we ask them is important. So first of all, I want to know, um, I seen you were shopping in this certain price range, you know, maybe it's 350 or, or whatever. Do you need to stay in that price range or is there room in the budget to go up? Ask them specifically. Uh, no, don't ask them specifically for a dollar amount yet. The motivation. Do I have time to find you what you're looking for or are you, are you in a hurry to move? Those kind of things. Agent, are you currently working with an agent? Is another agent helping you find properties as well? Mortgage, are you going to pay cash for this property or are you gonna to choose to get a loan? Have you spoken with Pitt yet? And then the appointment based on the conversation is simply just, we want to invite them to do the next thing. If we know that it takes multiple touches to, to convert a client, then we wanna set the expectation. Um, I, I If it's, I'm just shopping for now. We're getting through those objections. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, then we want to, um, great. I want to make sure you're seeing what you're looking for. When's a good time for me to check in on the list that I'm get, give, uh, giving you so that I can um, adjust those for you. Uh, objections, as we, well, as we start calling uh, FISBOs and expireds specifically, you're going to get the same exact objections over and over again. And uh, most of the new agents that are doing this, like I see that they tend to try to avoid the conversation, the uh, questions that are going to drag out the objections, where somebody that's been doing this for a while is always trying to find those. And the reason being is once you can find their objections, you, you really get a chance to get on their side. 
So for example, when I call expireds, one of the most common ones I get is that um, I'm, you know, you're the 10th person to call me. You're the 17th person to call me. So instead of trying to dodge that, you want to agree with that. And, it, and right when you would start agreeing with them and getting on their side, it's so easy to turn a conversation. For example, uh, I should just let you guys do it. But so, for example, I get that, you know, hey, you're the 17th person to call me. I, I, they're outraged. So I need to match their energy, right? I'm outraged too. I'm like, what? You've got 17 calls today? That's ridiculous. What are they saying to you? Let the, oh, I have a buyer for your house and blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay, okay. So they had a buyer, but they didn't bring it when it was on the market. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me either. You know, so we're, we're going to align ourselves with them, feel their pain and not push back on them. Now I'm on their side with, their side with, with the whole entire call. So they, they're telling you that they have buyers for your house. They didn't bring it when it was on the market. That doesn't make sense to me. That yeah, doesn't make sense to me either. Well, I can stop these calls for you by putting a sign in your yard. Not not that direct, but I'm just saying. Like once you're on their their side, then you you have alignment. Fizbos, the pushback is is like I, I'm not paying a commission. Great, I don't want you to pay a commission. When I do a Fizbo, I'll I'll just tell you what we do with those. Um, I'm gonna call a Fizbo and I'm gonna ask them. Hey, it looks like you're selling one, two, three Main Street. Is that still for sale? Yes. How much is it? It's 500000 Great. I've got buyers in my database looking for three bedroom, two baths that are qualified for 500000 What's the least amount you will take for that property? Well, I'm not taking less than 500. Okay. No matter what, you're not taking less than 500. Well, I might take 490. Okay, great. So I'm going to let all my buyers that are qualified for 500 and above know about this property. I'm going to let my buyers 490 just in case. If I have buyers qualified at 485, should I even tell them about your home? Just wait for them. What I'm doing is I'm giving them a chance to, to reduce the price. It's pretty simple. And most of them will do it. It's If I can get them to 485, I've got $15,000 in there. That's That's one side of the commission already done. Then all I have to do is just to say, would you be open to me bringing out uh, my camera, taking some pictures of the house so that I can build a marketing package to share with my prospective buyers? If I don't have a good marketing package, they're never even going to take a look at it. If I did that, if I could do that, would you allow me to come out to do that? Great. Would it be okay if I brought out a disclosure packet? If you don't understand disclosures, you put yourself at risk for liability. I'm going to make sure when I come out, since you're letting me do this, that I, I teach you about disclosure so you can protect yourself. Now I have a, an invite to go out to the house. I have uh, a little bit of leverage to show them that, hey, doing this by yourself is stupid. You out negotiated yourself already with $15,000. You already built in my commission. So it, it's very easy to, to move uh, expireds. I did this live in a training for um, our agents and that person called me for three days trying to get me to list their house and I didn't do FISBOs anymore at that time. It's it's just pretty, pretty simple to do. Um, okay, objections. We practice objections in our, in our office, on our team. We have objection battles. The practice time that you have should exceed your screen time on Facebook. So if you want pro money, you got to have pro practice, right? We, we practice these objections um, by simply taking one at a time. Somebody will throw one out and then the other person responds. It's very simple. It helps you get used to um, uh, the, the, the few objections that you get. And it's, it's very good for elevating your skill level real fast. You can do this with a partner within the group. Um, we do it you know, with our, with our team. But it is very, very powerful. We had uh, Brittany it did her first objection battle, went straight into the office, started dialing, got her very first expired. It's, it's super helpful. I would encourage you guys to do some practicing. Um, I talked about objections, uh, tracking your, your calls. If you're not putting in the effort, you know, you're not getting your 100 dials. You can't expect to get a listing. If you are putting in your 100 dials and you're still not getting a listing, then you know it's a skill set. So then you know you can sit down and and uh, <clears throat> work on the skill set with somebody that's a little more skilled. 
the call that I did with the suit jacket where I told you, you know, I, I wasn't hitting anything anymore and I went dry for all those months. It, if I didn't review the tape, I would have never known that I was coming off so desperate. So if you, I don't know if you have the ability in KB core to record your calls, but you could do it with a simple tripod and a cell phone camera if you wanted to. Okay, um, does everybody know where to find FISBOs and expireds? I, I get that if you go on the MLS, there's the little pie chart. I would, you, all the expires pop up every single day. Um, you can just click on that and get your list together. If you have Red X, you put those in, they come up. FISBOs, I would go to um, uh, Zillow or something like that. They have their own little section. You can pull up a list of FISBOs. There's videos that you can uh, watch for different scripts. There, Russ has some really good uh, scripts for FISBOs as well. Um, those are really good. Lead generation, I wanted to give you guys a list of like some of the tools that we use for lead generation, like paid sources, in case some of you guys are at a point where you can pay for them. We use uh, Realty.com and uh, Zillow as our primary one. And then we use you know all the free referral ones like the USDA or, or whatever they are. Um, the success that we have comes from managing the, the database. So every single person that we get, expired FISBO, internet lead, or whatever goes into a database. And then we, our system is, is we call each lead untouched. We call them 10 times until we get a, or 10 days in a row. If we don't get a hold of them, then we move it out to two weeks and we stick to automated uh, text and emails. And then we manage our tasks so that we make sure that we're hitting each lead 25 to 30 times. Um, so I don't know. Um, is there, okay, let me open it up for questions. You guys have any questions or want to go over any scripts or how can I help you guys with, with it now? Steve, I have a quick question on the 10 calls. Um, I do something similar. Uh, my, my, my question is, do, do you leave voicemails on each one of those 10 calls in a row or is there a rhythm to that? No, we don't leave voicemails until, and this is, this is the way we do it. Like I've, I've had people say they've had success leaving voicemail, but we don't. Yeah. Um, so we, we call, if we don't get a hold of them, there's no voicemail. There's a follow-up text that goes out saying, Hey, I missed you on the phone. And this mm -hmm. is what we're trying to do. You know, um, we all of our uh, tasks are actually built out. So I'm, I'm a, quite a bit of a copycat of uh, Veronica Figueroa out of um, Orlando. Her team is very successful with follow up. So we just took their task list and put it into our follow up boss. Uh, okay. they, they already fixed it. But yeah, no, no voicemails for us. Would it be impossible for you to share that task list with us? Um, I'll ask my operation guy how to do that because I don't know. Um, I, I know it was shared with us and he took it and put it right into our system. So I know it's possible. I just don't know how to do it. Um, but I, I'm happy to do whatever I can. Because for me, that's the overwhelming part. You know, I think, no, there needs to be a system. I know I don't use follow-up boss. I use a different system. But if those can be, I don't know, saved and shared, that would be a tremendous help for me. Yeah. It was for us, I mean, because then we didn't have to recreate it. So I just put my um, phone number in the chat. If you can grab that and send me a text uh, asking for that, I'll send it over to our operations guy and have him figure out how to do that. And then um, I'll get it out to you. And then I'll send it to Tom as well in case anybody else wants it. Are you using KV Core? Um, I'm using by referral only, which okay. is Joe Stump, kind of Brian Buffini style. Okay, perfect. Okay, any other questions I can help with? Steve, you mind if I summarize, I think, what I heard? Yeah, Pitt, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So I love it. So, you know, you guys, I don't call listings and expires, but we make calls on the mortgage side. So, uh, you know, the state of mind, calling your mom and uh, getting yourself worked up to be in a good state of mind, I, wow. I agree with that 100%. And then something that struck with me, you said, be of service. You know, you're, and I know you, Steve, you're of service. How can I help? You know, you, you're you're all about helping. And and that's what these people need. They're wounded. You know, their house hasn't sold. They, they really want it to sell. And then uh, you came up with your LP mama, which was uh, 
well, uh, something price, help me on the LP mom. I didn't get that all the way. Yeah, it's location price, motivation, agent, mortgage, and appointment. Love it, love it. All right. And then yeah. the next thing you do is you is you use the Tom Daves in you. You seeked out the objection. You looked for the objection and you actually <laughs> embraced because if you get an objection, now you've got something. You know, now now if you could just solve that, life is easy, right? And uh, I love the way that you disarm them. Um, and then the last thing was, you know, a, a pro player in any sport practices a lot more than they play the game. They practice a lot more than they play the game. So thanks, Steve. Yeah, thank you for the summary. That's good. Yeah, the um, the seeking the objection thing took me a long time to figure out. <laughs> I thought I could say something clever or you know trick them into buying a house, but you just it doesn't work that you can actually trick people into buying houses, you know. And right now, the the go to objection so popular for buyers is oh, but the interest rates, you know, like I, I just can't with the interest rates. And, you know, I feel that like I, I have a house that I'd love to sell, but the interest is, you know, under 3% and it's not the type of house I want to rent. So it's just sitting there while I'm still deciding. But when you ask somebody what they're waiting for, if you go deeper with it, man, you'll find out they have no freaking clue, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I would never buy a house right now at 8%. I totally agree. What are you waiting for it to drop to? They have no idea. They get they, they get stuck. They're like, well, uh, well, you know, not eight, well. Okay, so so what? What would be that number? Well, three percent. What if we never see that again? Are you prepared to pay a hundred percent rent for the rest of your life? Like, would you would you be open to buying it at five? Well, yeah, at five, I might buy it. Well, that's that's awesome. So I'm if it gets to five, I'm gonna call you and we're gonna jump up. Um, do you have cash saved up? Because we know if it hits five, we know it's gonna happen. We, it's been proved. Like people are gonna be paying over asking. Every buyer that's waiting that doesn't want to pay eight is going to be fighting for the same house. So let's make sure we get a cash saved up. How much do you think you need to save up? 20,000, 25,000, 30,000? Well, well, yeah, that sounds about right. Well, how much have you saved up so far in the last 10 years that you've been working for Caltrans? Well, I haven't really saved up any money. Okay, so would it make sense to maybe jump in and buy something when we get a, a nice drop to seven and then refi when it gets to five so you don't have to pay over asking? Great. You know, help them get to the conclusion that they're 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 making. You guys know they're making a mistake if they're, they're just going to pay rent forever. Like you wouldn't do it, right? So, so help them get clear on what they're actually waiting for. If the if the objections, I'm waiting for the market to crash. Me too. I'm going to be buying up houses. I always agree. Like like that's awesome. If it drops, then we get to buy houses again. It's going to be so much fun. It was so great in you know 2012 and 13. I wish I had more money to buy houses. What are you waiting for it to crash to? How low does it need to go? What what are we talking a 10% drop, 20% drop? When should I call you next? When do we need to be prepared to jump in action and jump on what you want to do? Like get in, get in alignment with the people so that they can know you're on their team and not just out to make a sell. All right. Any other questions? Jackie. Um, yeah. So um, thank you also. I think that was Eric that shared that link in the um chat box it's um tom's kind of lp mama for um, working with buyers which is so helpful so how would you restructure this for like um you know lp mama for a fisbo and like i mean you already know their location and you kind of already know the price they're looking for but how how would you script this out or you know better for a fisbo so for a FISBO and expired, they're, they're so much easier. Like you got all that information already, right? But I need to know the, uh, the motivation. Are you still motivated to to sell? Why are you selling it by yourself? You know, is it just to not pay a commission? Well, so now if I get that objection, then I can solve it for them. If if it's commission, then and they want it five hundred thousand for the house. What if we make it just five fifteen? What what if we make it five thirty? Is that possible with their price? I don't know. You know, um, but then, then I have the piece that I need for that. The other thing is uh, motivation. We got another motivation. Uh, are they planning on working with an agent or when? If if uh, if this doesn't sell, at what point are you going to interview an agent? Uh, appointment. Like, how can I get it in to meet them face to face? Our success rate goes up if we can meet them face to face, right? So as far as the script, the only script I use is the one where I, I want to identify where they're at, what's the lowest they're going to take, 
would they be open to somebody slightly under that coming in to look at the property too? So that's that's the line I use in FISBOs. It works really, really well. FISBOs, they they want help. They need to sell. Right now they're they're not going to sell. Like they got no marketing, no, no exposure, no nothing. And then you got a whole pool of buyers that are afraid to work with for sell by owners because they don't trust the process. They want somebody representing them and don't even know, right? So um I just need that information out of them. How much flexibility do I have in price? What's their motivation? And then where are they going to go next? Sometimes they're, they're going to sell that house to buy something else. And then there's a way that I can get paid with the whole package, you know, on the buy side and, and the sell side, if they don't want to pay a commission here, you know, am I going to make enough money between the two to make this thing work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I worked with um, lots of FISBOs in, in my first and second year of real estate. And I do remember and I loved your comment of, you know, agree with them really that that is so powerful. Agree with them on their objection. And I do remember one, one where one phrase I used a lot, which was very effective is, yeah, I, I'm definitely not like most realtors. And so I really appreciate your, your stance on that because you got to get on their side because when yeah. you call a FISBO, you're the enemy. You are yeah. the enemy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but Jackie, at the same time, like you've worked with enough realtors to know that, that um, there's some really bad ones, right? Like we we love realtors as an in industry, but there are some bad ones. And it only takes you working with one bad realtor as a as a seller to have, you know, a major wound where you don't want to work with them anymore. So it's OK to agree with those. So you don't have to hate all realtors. But, you know, I, I get it. Yeah, I've worked mm -hmm. with them. That I don't yeah, even want to talk some rough ones. Yeah. Well, I don't know how so I didn't punch that one. Yeah. Patrick. Uh, just. Uh, tactically, when, when yeah. you're calling through these lists, do yeah. you do any type of prior research before you make the dial or do you just let the dialer go and you just figure it out once they pick up? So th that's that's a a uh, a transition that you make over time. So when I first started, I, I wanted the property in front of me. I wanted because what if they asked me a question, you know, so yeah. like I did do that and I felt a real need to do that. And I don't know if I'd done it differently in the beginning that I would have got to where I am now. So I'm not going to say don't, but now I don't care. It, it's all the same. You know, after you do it so many times and, and you, you seem like you've done it for a minute, you seem to have a good understanding of it. But after you've done it for a while, the objections, the properties, they're all the same. It doesn't really matter. Like, so I, I don't do that anymore, but I'm not going to say don't do it in the beginning because I did in the beginning. I, I just, it made me feel more confident knowing the properties. Yeah, because I find myself talking myself out of calling them where I just go, they're so out of lunch on their price. And, you know, it's in a place I don't even want to work. But if I just call it, sometimes it works out anyways. <laughs> so it, it really does. Yeah. And I, I would do the same thing. I, I Back to the beginning, I would have not call places where, well, I don't really do that area or um, that. that... Uh oh. Yeah, it looks like Steve froze. Is he frozen on your screen, everybody? It was the gold nugget too. It was the million. I know. No. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> you call these three people, you're making millions next year. Yeah, I mean, while he's unfreezing, uh, I I could share too, guys. I I I don't know. I'm I'm thinking Fizbo's and and expired is a great market to to if you haven't stepped into it yet to step into it because. Houses are so much harder to sell now and FISBOs are facing the same thing, right? And expireds are facing the same thing. And so, um, you know, I did, I did FISBOs for my first two years and then stepped out of that, that pillar of business. And, um, but yeah, I closed 10 in my first year and I knew nothing and I was awful at it. So anyway. Sounds pretty good to me. 10 sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. 10 listings. I, I can't hear you, Kyle. What'd you say? 10 would be great. Yeah. And you guys, I did. So I, I was like awful at it. I'll, if you guys want to hear, I'll tell you if we have a few minutes or maybe we need to stop. It's about over. Oh, actually the, the, the professional is on, on back with us. So Steve, take it away. I can't hear you. You're Thank muted. You, Steve. Steve, you're muted. I was rambling on. Oh no. Oh no, he froze again. Okay. 
Well, guys, if you want to know how to do it horribly and get 10 listings, um, this is what I did. I just popped on Zillow and Zillow, if you create, I know I hate Zillow. And this is the only reason I used it is I, I hopped on Zillow. I called around my area, all the new Zillow for sale by owners, and it would turn it green once you clicked on it and I'd call them. And, um, and then one thing you got to realize is it's the two 50% of all FISBOs will list within two weeks. So it, it's which agent is standing in the end is who they're going to list with, but you don't know which 50% are going to list. Um, and the other thing I, I think I, I, I just knew um, that th they're a tough animal because they are, uh, you really are their enemy. And when you call and say, I'm an agent, they're like, ah, oh, they're just screaming at you. Um, but it, it was just who's staying in the game. I mean, day one, they're probably getting 50, 60. Just imagine they're a FISBO. They're going to sell their house. They know what to do. And they, they put it online. And then they're like, um, I'm going to get all these calls from, from, from buyers and all their calls are agents and you're one of them. And so <laughs> they're pretty frustrated, but it's, it's basically, they get, they'll get 50, 60 calls the first day, 40, 50, the second day, 20, 30, the third day, you know, 10 to 20. And so, um, you know, you might call them and they're, they're just awful people. I remember one I wrote on the crop on the, the top of my notes for him. I just big jerk. And I called him two weeks or one week later, got an appointment and I listed his house and he was nicer. So you just got to understand you got to get on their side. And so that was awesome. What, what he shared. Um, but yeah, I said about two appointments every single day dialed, um, not, actually not a hundred. I just got better at it. And um, then I was able to, to produce that in, in the end. So anyway, well, we've got yeah, guys, uh, Steve just texted me. He's uh, his internet is well, obviously not working well, but it's apparently down, but he did want me to say thank you to everybody for uh, taking part in the call today. Um, unless Jackie, you can, you know, if you have any more to say, please feel free to. I mean, let, let's go do it, you guys. It's a great time to jump into FISBOs if you haven't already or and expireds. Um, I appreciate his expertise on expired because I don't have that kind of expertise on that, but it's a great opportunity. So, I, I mean, we've gone over, guys. Thanks so much for joining. And um, I, I think we're good. Right. But download this document in the chat box. It's a great help. Thanks, guys. Okay. Talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend.